What we're recording is a response basically to some comments that were posted under the entropy video and so YouTube has a, a pretty bad reputation in terms of the quality of its comments usually and sometimes you get abusive comments, sometimes you don't get such intelligent comments but the, I really don't feel that's the case for 60 Symbols, in fact we get some quite perceptive, quite intelligent, quite thought provoking comments, both positive and negative on the videos. And in particular with the Entropy video, um, I've had a number of emails, I've had a number of comments posted under the video and there have been a number of really important questions raised. And I guess the thing that I'm slightly uncomfortable about with that, with that video, which I felt I could have put across a lot better, was to really point out the difference between an analogy and what's actually going on. And so a cardinal rule I used to teach oh, for six years I taught a first year module on thermal and kinetic physics where entropy plays a, a key role and my cardinal rule was to make that distinction. When I've, given that I haven't, I've disobeyed that cardinal rule in the video, I feel a little bit uncomfortable and people have picked up on that and quite rightly picked up on that. So let me state for the record, well there were a couple of things, the, um, somebody called Penguin Jin and um, somebody called Human Chemistry 101 have um, asked questions about, well, I've suggested that what I really didn't put across was the idea of the sort of evolution or the history of entropy. I guess what I need to point out, um, and it's stated on the, on the 60 Symbols website, but maybe I need to reiterate that, is that when we do these videos, they're not meant to be tutorials, they're not really meant to be lectures. They're meant to be, what does that symbol mean to a particular scientist? And if somebody says entropy to me, the first name that springs into my head is Boltzmann. And the first concept that springs into my head is the connection of entropy to configurations and arrangements. And that's what you get in the video. But of course, having taught the course for quite some time, I am well aware that there are people like Clausius, like Carnot, who really made very important contributions to entropy. But for me, when I hear entropy, Boltzmann springs to mind. And that's the first point. So, okay, I guess I glossed over to a certain extent the history. The second point, and I think perhaps the more important point, is so I talk about in that video about students and, and distributions of students and how students are moving around and how the, the entropy of those students changes. And we could think of, for example, with the students here who are milled about, they're milling about, they're filling out this space quite well. We could think about bringing those into what we term a low entropy state, where we pack them all nicely together, nicely ordered in the centre of this, this, this lovely green. And then as they sort of uh, spread out, move away from that nice ordered state, we see we're moving to a higher entropy state. And that's really what entropy is about. It's about this. Um, dispersal of energy, about this moving from um, a state where everything's nicely packed and ni nicely tightly ordered into one where everything spreads out. And you can apply that to gas molecules just as easy as you can apply it to students. The difficulty is you have to, I, what I didn't make 100% clear and what I spend so much time doing in my lectures, which is why it's so frustrating, is that this is an, this is an analogy. When I talk about those students, I'm really thinking in my head of gas molecules moving around. And these concepts of entropy apply to gas molecules. We can't say that a particular arrangement of students has a thermodynamic entropy, but a particular arrangement of gas molecules does. And they, as those gas molecules spread out, as they disperse, that, 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 that's really the essence of entropy. But, for example, time and time again you'll see entropy discu discussed in terms of, well, if I have a nice ordered system, or let's, let's, let's use some cards, if I have some nice orderly system where these cards are lined up all the same and all in the same sort of state, that, for example, if as a after some time they do that, well this is an example of entropy, it's an example of, of, of disorder increasing, but that applies to gas molecules, it doesn't apply to real world objects like this. There is no difference in the thermodynamic entropy, or entropy, of that particular arrangement compared to that particular entry, arrangement. Where the entropy has changed is in terms of when I do work, when I move these around in my muscles, that's where the entropy is. And so having spent so much time during my undergraduate lectures trying to put across this, this, this um, very important distinction between an analogy and what's actually happening, I was a little bit gutted 
to, um, to, 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 to find that I hadn't really put across that, um, that, that so well in the, in, the, in the video on entropy. And um, the final thing, I guess, is uh, people have picked up on, well, you've, you've, you should have covered the, the, the arrow of time. You should have covered how entropy relates to second to the slow. We can't, these are five minute videos and, and or 10 minute videos. And what we're trying to do is really, as I said, try to put across the essence of what these things mean um, to us. What Brady, particularly with me, spends most of his time doing is editing out I might talk for an hour and then I put Brady in the horrible position of, of well, what, what do I use here? And um, so I, what I'm delighted to see is that the Entropy video has generated so much discussion and debate and that's really what I'm doing this for, to, to have that debate and discussion and to have people email me, I'm delighted about that. But I um, would have preferred, I guess, if I had discussed things and described things in a slightly different manner. So you, re you do read all your comments and look at them, do you? Absolutely, yeah. It's, um, it can be eye-opening. And it's just like with undergraduate lectures. You, we get questionnaires and, you know, those questionnaires, the very vast majority, okay, you get some strange and silly comments like there should be more beer in lectures. But the vast majority of those are very mature, even from first-year students, very mature, very important comments that feed back in and guide my teaching. And I sort of see these YouTube videos, it's a real learning experience for me. And um, particularly trying, I find it extremely difficult to compress an hour down into 10 minutes. Really, really, really difficult. And That's true, he does, <laughs> he does find it very difficult. <laughs> and um, yeah, so those comments are really useful.